works and how he puts things together. You may not catch it as I go through this, but God was just all over the stuff that he would have me to say this morning. You know, when, and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about me and what I went through, but I, I need to share this to get into the scripture, why God gave me this message. When I went into the hospital for that surgery and when, when they wheeled me into the uh, operating room, I asked God for two things. You guys talk about it. I asked him to hold my hand. Yep. And he did. Yes. Second thing I asked was, God, let me see an angel. <laughs> but he didn't. So I'm still looking. <laughs> but the thing I, I wanted to get to was, after I asked God that, I, I sat there and thought, you know, it's extremely possible I may not come back out of here. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, did I do enough? Is God pleased with me? If when I stand before him, will I be able to say, I've done all that I can do? I, I've done what you've called me to do. I, I, I've tried my best to be the servant that you would have me to be. You know, the Bible tells us, and all you know this in the book of Hebrews, uh, uh, Paul writes that it's appointed unto men once to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. And after this, the judgment. And if we look in the book of Revelation in chapter 20, beginning of verse 12, John writes here, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Revelation 22, 12, suppose you don't die. Suppose the Lord comes back. Revelation 22, 12, Jesus said, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Matthew 16, 27, Jesus said, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Think about it. There's coming a day when we're going to have to stand before God. We're going to have to give an account of everything that we have done in this body. We're going to have to give an account of what we have done with what he has given us, what he has equipped us for, what he has called us to do. And whatever reward that we would happen to get is according to our works, is according to what we have done. If you go and you look at that word in the original, the word work means uh, your doing, your deeds. That's what it needs. Uh, so when you stand, and Christ is going to reward you according to what you've done, what you are doing now to the deeds that you have done. And you may say, I, I don't care about rewards. Just give me a cabin in the corner of glory and I'll be satisfied. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, rewards don't uh, mean a whole lot to me right now either. Uh, but this does, and I've thought about this long and hard, and it really got down into my heart. I don't want him to be disappointed with me. Amen. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> I, I other than in rewards, I don't want him to have to look at me and know that I did not do everything that I could do. I don't want him to look at me with sadness in his eyes. I don't know if that's how it'll happen because I didn't do what he had called me to do because I didn't do what he gave me the opportunity to do because I didn't do what he equipped me to do. How would you feel if you had to stand before him on that day? Uh, many of us have talked here this morning about everything he's done for us, everything he's doing for us, everything we know he's going to do for us, how are we going to feel if we had to stand before him on that day knowing we have not done what we could do for him? That's right, amen. There's a song uh, that ever since in that operating room when I thought about that, I can't get off my mind. I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. We, as children of God, have got to sing to the point where I just want to muddle through and get to heaven. That's how we are. 
Listen, and if you truly love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, uh, with all your strength, you're going to want him to be satisfied with you. You're going to want to please him. You're going to want to do that, that he has called you to do. And I'm going to tell you something, uh, according to the word of God, on that day when we have to stand before him, everything is going to be according to what you've done mm -hmm. Amen. Right. or didn't do. And I, I'm convinced in my mind uh, that a lot of Christians just really don't care. I just want to get there. I just want to make it through. If I, if I can miss hell, that's all that matters. More than that should matter. We should want to please our Lord. Yes, we should yes, want to yes. serve our Lord. Uh, we should want to do everything that we can do uh, because of everything that he has done for us. Because of everything that, that he has given us. Book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he hath done whether it be good or bad. Uh, Romans 2 6. He will render to every man according to his deeds. Listen to this. I want you to hear this and let it sink in. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Now it's time to start being honest with ourselves. And start looking at our lives. And start looking at what we have done. What are we going to receive? What have we really done? Oh, I come to church. Whoopee. I put money in the box back there. Whoopee. Gary said it Sunday school, and I'm going to say it again. God ain't worried about your money. He's worried about your heart. Amen. Amen. Right. And if your heart loves him, uh, then your body is going to be following. Your will is going to be following. You're going to be doing the things that he has called you to do. Uh, the things uh, that he expects for you to do. Uh, because listen, uh, according to this word, uh, you are going to receive the things done in your body. And, I, and God makes me be honest and tell myself a lot of times, ah, there's a lot I didn't do I should have done. And there's probably a few of you sitting here in the same That's right. boat. That's Amen. right. That's right. But here's the thing about my God. It's never too late. That's right. You can start today to do the things you know he would have you to do. The things he has called you to do. The things he has quit you to do. Uh, it ain't just about coming to church and paying tithes and being nice to people and all that. Uh, yeah, that word tells us uh, that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are witnesses. We are the light. We are the salt. How many of us honestly are really being those things? Go on. Mm -hmm. If we're the salt, we never get out of the shaker. That's right. That's right. If we're the light, our batteries are dead. Mm -hmm. And we're going to receive according to the things we have done. That's right. But this again. How's it going to feel when he looks at you with, with sadness in his eyes because <coughs> you didn't do what he asked of you to do? Those rewards he talks about, I don't know what they are. I'll guarantee you this, they're good. Amen. And I do want me some. But more than that, I want to please him. Amen. We need to stop making this about us. And that's exactly what we have done. Just get me through, just get me through, just get me through. It's about him. Our job is to serve him, to please him, uh, to do the things uh, that he has called us to do. First Corinthians 3 and 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man, listen, this is the part I want you to get, shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. What you get depends on what you do. What you receive from Christ. And you can agree with me or disagree with me. It doesn't matter. You know, the Bible talks about crowns. And if you really read the Bible and you really study the Bible, not all of them are literal crowns. You're not going to stack ten crowns on your head. 
but it's an honor that you receive. It's a gift that you received. And I believe a lot of those rewards that, that we're talking about here are something you receive in your heart. It's an honor that you receive. It, it, it's something that, it's not tangible that you can hold in your hand, but it's something inward. And I may be wrong about that. I don't have scripture for that. But don't you want, I want you to think about your, your best experience here being in the presence of Christ and multiply that a billion fold. Perhaps that's the reward. It can't feel very good to stand before him and hear him say, why didn't you? I said this before you. I, I gave you the ability. I told you I'd go with you. I would give you the strength. Why didn't you? I don't want to stand before him like that. We have no... I, I've talked a lot over the months that the church doesn't have a zeal. The church doesn't have a fire. And you know why we don't? Because we don't have a fire for Christ. We don't have a zeal to please our Lord. If we don't have a zeal and a fire to please Him, we're not going to have a zeal and a fire to reach the lost. We're not going to have a zeal and a fire to help the hurting, uh, to set the captive free, to do all those things we've been called to do. If we don't have a zeal uh, uh, to please Christ, then we're not going to have a zeal for any of the rest of it. And, and we're going to muddle through and, and end up standing before Christ uh, with nothing in our hands to offer Him. In the book of James... Chapter 1, verse 22. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. I'm going to tell you something. A whole lot of us fall into that category. Well, I'll add some to it. We talk it good too. But that don't matter. It don't, don't matter how much you read it. don't matter how much you hear it. don't matter how much you talk it if you don't do it. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face at a glance. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but listen to this, but a doer of the work. A lot of times we quote that as word, the Bible says work. A doer of the work. Every man shall be judged according to his work. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. We are falling short. We are, are, are failing. We are uh, not doing what we've been called to do. We look into the word. We talk about the word. We quote the word. Uh, but we're not out there doing the work that we have been called to do. And because of that, uh, i got to believe uh, that it brings a sadness uh, to his heart. There's a song uh, that was out a while ago. It's pretty popular a while ago. Does he still feel the nails? Uh, maybe some of you have heard it. By lying in that good, does he still feel the nails every time I fail? How much does it hurt him uh, when I don't do uh, what he has called me to do? When I don't do what he shed his blood uh, to enable me to do? Uh, when I don't do what he has equipped me to do? Uh, when I don't do the things he asks of me after everything uh, that he does to me and uh, does for me? Uh, how much does it hurt him? But do we really care? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think uh, the church in general really cares. Uh, back to what I said before. All I want is to get there, and that's all I care about. And maybe some money here, good health here, and this and that. Uh, but we need to start caring uh, about uh, the one who shed his blood, about the one who suffered uh, everything that he suffered and went through everything that he went through and did everything that he did. We need to start caring a little bit uh, about that and become uh, those people.
people that would be doers of the work. Uh, there's people that would do what he has called us to do. Maybe this uh, doesn't touch you. Uh, maybe it doesn't hit you uh, like it hits me. But I wish you could get the picture uh, that I got in my mind. I was standing before him and seeing the sadness on his face and the tears in his eyes. Uh, that could have been avoided if I would have only done what I am absolutely capable of doing because he has made me capable. And you are too. And a lot of us will say, I can't do this, and I can't do that. He has made you capable ministers. If you choose to be capable ministers, I can't go out witness, I'm too shy. He will give you courage. He will give you boldness. He will give you uh, the word uh, that you need to say, uh, but you've got to be willing uh, to go out and do it. Every one of us is capable because he makes us capable. Yeah. And we need to start doing what he has called us to do. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, beginning at verse 11, this is very familiar. And I'm not going to read it, all. I'm going to summarize it. This talks about the nobleman who went to a far country. And when he went to a far country, he called his servants and gave them 10 pounds and told them to occupy until I come. You know what that word occupy means? In the original language, it means to be busy, to do deeds. That's what it means. And just in case you don't know, but I'm sure all of you do, who is this nobleman? It's Christ. Who are these servants? It's us. So when he went to heaven, he left us with something. He gave us something and he said, now, take what I have given you and occupy. Go to work. Do the deeds that I have called you to do. Keep busy. But what happened? He went and when he returned, uh, he asked them, uh, what have you done? What have you gotten for me? What have you received? Uh, the first came and said that he gained 10 pounds. And the nobleman said to him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over 10 cities. Second came, said he has gained five, and he got the same answer. And then he came on to the last one. And he didn't do anything with it. He took it and he held on to it and didn't do a thing with it. Uh, listen, I picture that as a church member today. Uh, God has saved him uh, and, and equipped him uh, to be a witness and to be a servant. And what does he do? He goes to church. And that's about it. That's how I picture this last one. Uh, he came and he said, I, I, I took that uh, that you gave me and I held on to it. I, I wanted to make sure nothing bad happened. I wanted to make sure I didn't lose it. I wanted to make sure this. I wanted to make sure that. Uh, whatever his excuses were. And listen to what the nobleman said. He said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. Listen, for I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken from him. If we, uh, now listen, this is when the nobleman returned. I, I've heard this all my Christian life. Uh, well, if you got a talent, you don't use it, God will take it away from him. That's not what he's talking about here. This is after the nobleman returns. This is when he came back to see uh, what his servants had done. When he came back to see what his servants had done, uh, the one who had done nothing with it lost what he had. What's that mean? Something we need to think about. What if on Christ's return, uh, and he asked, uh, what did you do with what I, I, I gave you? What did you do with this? What, well, God, listen, I can't talk right I'm shy, I'm this, I'm that, and everything else. So I didn't want to go out there and mess it up for you. So I just held on to it. And I went to church and I paid my tithes and I did this and I did that. And what's he going to say? That's not what I told you to do. That's right. I told you to work. I told you to occupy. I told you to go out and do those things uh, that would bring in more. Uh, but 
but this one didn't do it, and a lot of us aren't doing it. And on that day, uh, when he comes, is he going to look it up and say to the angel, to whoever it is, and say to them, take away what they got.